Pastor David here with the Friday devotional for February 11th. Our memory verse this week is, remember, remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy from the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, verse 8. Well, this weekend is Valentine's Day weekend and coming Monday is Valentine's Day. And of course, we have all of the traditional um, fun events of Valentine's Day. I must say I'm kind of put off by it all. I'm not really a big fan of all the um, commercialization of the holiday, the um, fluffy feelings of romance and the heart flutters and emotions of, the, of all that. What do, you, what do you need a holiday to tell someone that you love them, right? Um, and the shallow expectation of chocolates and flowers and cards and whatnot. And then I got to thinking, you know, Christians actually should be experts on Valentine's Day because Christians are all about love. Our faith, our religion, is all about love. And our God is love. It says in 1 John 4, 8, God himself is love. So we should be the experts. And you know, the Bible, the greatest commandment, Jesus says, is about love. Love your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Second greatest commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. And then Jesus says to the, to the, to the disciples, the new commandment I give you to love one another. That's the whole key. We have the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. Um, and we have lots and passages about love. This is the main theme of the whole Bible. So we're going to take a, a, I'm going to use Valentine's Day to have a quick look at what love really is for us as Christians. Think about that. We use the word so frivolously and so emptily. Like, for example, on Valentine's Day, I grabbed these. These were Valentines from um, my daughter a few years ago. I kind of kept them. They're all kind of cutesy. I like penguins. I kept, the, I kept the penguins one here. But you can see these nice, cute little Happy Valentine's Day and just all these fun little um, meaningless parts of love. Love in the Bible, in its true sense, is not empty, it's not shallow, it's not meaningless. It's quite different. We use love to think about like. I like, I love pizza, right? Do I love pizza? Oh, I like pizza. Um, we think about love as being romantic, the heart fluttering, the feelings of emotion that you feel towards someone. Or we love like um, deep affection. I love my best friends. Right? But each of these loves that we talk about in English don't really go the distance. Like can change. I can, my, my preferences change, what I, what I like and don't like. My feelings change. Um, I can fall in and out of love. Um, and even my uh, relationships change over time as well. So the Bible talks about love. Actually, in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament there, there's a word that is used for love called hesed, H-E-S-E-D. That's the Hebrew word. There is no translation for that word into English. It means a loyalty. It means a commitment. It means covenant. It means mercy. It means treating other people not based on what they deserve, but on your own conviction and commitment to go the distance anyway come what may, no matter what. So when the English translators were first translating the Bible into English back in the King James Version in 1611, they could not find a translation for that word. So they created their own word. They made up a word called loving kindness. Put two words, just squished them together and created the new word loving kindness. And this is a way to show covenant faithfulness of God. We see that in the Bible. God continuing his faithfulness in the covenant to a people who are stiff-necked, who are turning away from God, who are unfaithful. But God's love, his nature of love, sticks with them anyway with a deep passion and compassion. In the Bible, we see this 
in um, a few verses. I want to read them for you. We see Hesed coming out in loving kindness. Um, Psalm 36.10, your loving kindness, O God, is better than life. Psalm 51.1, be gracious to me, O God, according to your loving kindness. See, not because I deserve it, not because I'm good. I, I fail and I make all kinds of reasons, give you reasons not to love me, but because of your loving kindness, be gracious to me. And goes, according to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. God's chesed is why he forgives. Psalm 89, 33. But I will not break off my loving kindness from them, says God, nor deal falsely in my faithfulness. Because of God's character of loving kindness, of chesed, that he will not turn his back on those who are repugnant even to him at times because of what we do, the sin that we do. Jeremiah 31.3, the Lord saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. See, it's not temporary. It never ends. It goes the distance. Therefore, I have drawn you with loving kindness. Now, in the New Testament, um, the word that is used for love, there are many words of love in the New Testament. The word that is given for God is agape. You may have heard this. It is the best translation of chesed from the Old Testament into the New Testament Greek. Again, no word for that in English. So agape in the New Testament is always the love of God, for God, and with God, godly love. And we see agape used by Jesus talking about God. And we see agape best in Jesus. He shows us what this looks like, what this means. Agape love is not a romantic love. It's not um, friend-liking love. It is committed love that goes the distance. And in agape, it's self-sacrificing for the sake of the other. That's hard stuff. But we see this best in Jesus when he, in agape, goes to the cross and dies as our Savior. So Jesus shows us what it looks like to give yourself so completely for the sake of the other. Great, amazing sacrifice. And so on um, Valentine's Day, we see that Jesus is the true representation of, or true um, demonstration of what love is. And I have here, um, we have John 3.16, which is the famous love passage. And if you write it this way in English, you see the word Valentine vertically through it. For God so loved the world, so loved, he gave. See, sacrificial giving. For the sake of the other. It's putting others first. So we are people of love. As Christians, we are showing the world what this means. On Valentine's Day, we proclaim what love means. We are people of love. So the question we need to ask is, what does it mean for us to love faithfully committed to others who are undeserving? Boy, that is so true in our world and life right now. What does it mean for us to sacrificially put others first? Hmm, chesed and agape. What, who do you need to love like this? So my challenge for you on Valentine's Day is first of all to take Jesus as your valentine. He's lived in a self-giving way for you. Live in a self-giving way for him back. And two, choose someone that you struggle to love in this kind of loving kindness, self-sacrificing way. And make them your secret valentine. Resolve in your heart to choose them as yours and to love them 
with this godly love. Let's pray together. Oh, God of love, love yourself, who is yourself love. We thank you for your hesed upon us, for your agape that has redeemed us. This love you've shown to us and you give into us as you come into us in the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Your loving kindness is greater than life, O oh God. I pray that you would help each of us on this Valentine's Day to love you back with this kind of love and also to love your children with this kind of love too. We can't do it on our own. We need you, Holy Spirit, to do it through us. We pray for our secret Valentine that we're taking this year, this, I mean, this weekend, and help us to love them with your love. Thank you, Jesus. You are love. Amen. Until next time, keep calm and carry God.